Money, 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 money. It's time for Money in the Bank. And sure, we could put together a top 10 list of people who should win the briefcase this year, but we think you guys deserve a little something extra. So how about a top 10 of who should and a top 10 of who shouldn't? It's a fusion dance list. Hooray, I'm Adam from WrestleTalk, and here are our top 20 wrestlers who should and shouldn't win Money in the Bank. Should number one, Cody Rhodes. Cody's path to finishing this bloody story of his could very feasibly see him winning this year's Money in the Bank ladder match would allow Cody to cross the Raw Smackdown divide without undermining the already very undermined brand split. And secondly, he can name his time and place right off the bat and we can get this ball rolling. Ideally, this would see Cody name SummerSlam as the place instead of next year's WrestleMania. Roman's bloodline empire is on pace to crumble completely in the next few weeks slash months. So let's not artificially extend this thing out any longer. He's already passed a thousand days. Let's just do this thing. Should number one, Brock Lesnar. Now, Cody realistically should win the briefcase at money in the bank, but there is a Brock Lesnar-shaped elephant in the room. They have one win each, and in the wrestling world, that comes with obligations. However, after 2019, we can never be 100% sure that Brock Lesnar isn't going to be in a Money in the Bank ladder match. Poor Mustafa Ali, how different things could have been. While the Brock party thing was admittedly hilarious, it goes without saying that we don't need an encore. Brock should never again be involved in the world title scene. We got our fill. Thank you. Should number two, Becky Lynch. Yes, I know, you could also very feasibly argue that Becky Lynch doesn't need a Money in the Bank win. She's done it all, right? Wrong. She hasn't held that briefcase before. I don't know about you, but that just seems kind of wrong. Personally, I am enjoying Lynch being separate from the women's title scene, and ideally, I'd like that to continue. After all, it would be awfully nice to get a women's Money in the Bank winner actually hold on to the thing for longer than a day. Plus, you know, Becky would make that case look ridiculous. Shouldn't number two, Ronda Rousey. Ah, rowdy Ronda Rousey. Does she even want to win this? Ronda has spoken before about not needing another championship run, so no need to go against her wishes and force a Money in the Bank win on her. Ronda and Shayna have finally gotten their hands on those women's tag titles anyway, so just let them do that for a while. The tag scene is going to benefit from Rousey's star power, whereas the opposite usually happens every time she's involved with the world title. Should number three, LA Knight. LA Knight's popularity at this point is reminiscent of a Zack Ryder or a Rusev. Yeah, and what happened to both of them when they got over without WWE's permission? They got buried. Yeah, or at least never actually received the push their popularity warranted. So instead, listen to those cheers, don't pipe in booze, roll with it and give the people what they want. He literally has all the tools and he's 40 years old for god's sake yeah don't dilly dally pull the trigger now and you will have a bona fide top guy for at least the next three to four years shouldn't three any of the bloodline i'd love to see jay uso dethrone roman as much as the next guy however neither jimmy or solo or even Heyman should be winning the money in the bank match actually paul Heyman, you know what you could convince me and why exactly their ongoing civil war simply doesn't warrant this briefcase there are more than enough moving parts in that story and actually having someone outside the bloodline winning the case would probably benefit the story overall. Having Roman a paranoid wreck, not only due to threats from within his family, but also on the outside courtesy of an external Money in the Bank cash-in, it would make for good TV. Should number four, Bianca Belair. Okay, don't rush to the comments just yet. Here is out. If reports regarding a potential impending Bianca Belair heel turn are to be believed, a Money in the Bank win could serve as a really fun and effective way to do so. I mean, we we're all getting beyond sick of Belair super scenering her way through an entire women's division, so if she were immediately to regain her her title via Money in the Bank, people would understandably be a bit miffed. Or you could have her hold on to the briefcase for a bit and use it as a prop to cover her misery over losing her beloved championship. Either way, people will hate it and hate his money. Shouldn't for Bianca Belair. See, I told you to hold fire in that angry comment. Even I can hear myself and recognize how immediately granting Belair a ticket back into the title scene is rather counterproductive. So instead, let's allow Belair to cool off first, especially if WWE don't plan on turning her heel anytime soon. Besides, I hear Raquel Rodriguez needs her 579th tag partner, so there you go. Perfect solution. Should number five, Chad Gable. Okay, we've all had our fun with the Alpha Academy and Maximum Male Models and all of that. Can we actually get to the part where WWE pushes this man already? Like, seriously? Do you just could you push him, please? Now, it may seem lazy to draw the Kurt Angle comparisons, but not since Kurt Angle has someone possessed both the legitimate wrestling background and the ability to be an absolute goof. Gable is the highlight of any segment or match he's part of. He truly has it all to be a world champion, apart from the complete backing of WWE. Gable is rumored to be a potential Money in the Bank contestant, so maybe our prayers will finally be answered soon. Shouldn't number five, Dominic Mysterio. Oh, I almost put him on the should list. I really did, because it would be very, very funny. Another name touted to be a contestant in this year's 
Mysterio's match is your friendly neighborhood ex-con Dom Dom Mysterio. With Dom reportedly being a Triple H favorite, there is an actual strong possibility he could walk out of the O2 with the briefcase. However, as fun as a shock factor of that would be, I just don't feel he's world champion material yet. Instead, start him off with a mid-card title or the tag titles, build him up, don't skip a step, he's only 26 years old, don't repeat the same mistake you did with Austin's theory last year. Should number six, Trish Stratus. As silly as giving the money in the bank briefcase to a Hall of Famer seems on the surface, Trish is undoubtedly doing great work at present, and an eighth world title run is something I'd be all for. She genuinely is even better in the ring now than at her peak, which is just insane. She also seems to be really enjoying herself, so why not keep the good times rolling and give her that feather in the cap of a money in the bank victory? After all, this is probably the last run she's going to have, so maybe ever get another one over on Becky by pipping her to the briefcase and allowing her to soak up all that glorious heat. Shouldn't number six, Charlotte Flair. As much as I can sit here and give you reasons as to why Charlotte shouldn't win money in the bank, you know them. Should number seven, Damien Priest. During his backlash program with Bad Bunny, Priest just had that top guy energy about him, oozing confidence and absolutely hitting the ball out of the park with a San Juan Street Fight match itself. Priest's great showing was something that WWE have reportedly taken note of, with reports suggesting he could be in line for a big push. And there really is no better way to make that reality than a money in the bank win. Priest has often felt like Judgment Day's forgotten man, so let's give him his due and establish a new dominant force in the main event scene. Shouldn't number seven, Bray Wyatt's Uncle Howdy. Bray Wyatt's uncertain current health status would make him a strange candidate to win money in the bank, however it can't be ruled out. While it would garner attention, WWE should really test the waters with Wyatt when he returns given his health-related absence. An immediate thrust is a bit too much and sets his high expectations immediately. History has taught us that Wyatt and world titles are not a happy marriage, so let's not do that anytime soon. Also, it goes without saying that an Uncle Howdy win would be about a million times worse. He is awful and silly. Should number eight, Io Sky. With Dakota Kai unfortunately out with a torn ACL, the impending split of damage control is a bit up in the air. Yet, to be honest, in reality, it makes things a lot simpler. Io is ready for a singles push. Backlash proved that in spades, so let's have Money in the Bank be the catalyst for Io to definitively step out of Bailey's shadow. She could even topple Bailey in order to grab the briefcase, rubber stamping the split, and also setting up a nice rivalry for both off the back of it. Shouldn't number eight, Zoe Stark. While I love Zoe Stark's new allegiance with Trish Stratus and applaud WWE in giving her something meaningful to do early in her main roster run, a Money in the Bank win would be a bit much. After all, Stark is the protege to Trish and should not be overshadowing her immediately. Instead, if WWE fancied Trish's Money in the Bank win, you could easily have Stark play a major part in making that happen. Similarly to Kane assisting Seth Rollins in 2014, have Stark in the match simply to ensure that Trish gets the W. It'll garner Stark some well-needed early heat and allow that her growth in WWE doesn't end up rushed. Should number nine, Sami Zayn. Sit down, Cody. There's one story that needs to be finished in WWE and it ain't yours right now. I still stand by the fact that Sami Zayn was the guy to knock off Roman at WrestleMania. And while he did get some form of revenge at Night of Champions, he didn't actually pin Roman. Despite being consistently cast aside, Sami has stayed at the top of WWE's card and remains perhaps the most over guy in the company, so let's give him his due. Like I said earlier, Roman has passed the 1,000 days, the bloodline's crumbling, have Sami plant the stake firmly in the heart of the tribal chief and close this story the right way. Shouldn't number nine, Edge. Edge's final pursuit of the world championship should really have been the recent world heavyweight tournament. He cut that emotional Twitter promo and nothing came of it. So given WWE passed up an opportunity to tell that story, perhaps they could have another one in mind, courtesy of Edge once again reclaiming gold via his favorite method, an opportunistic money in the bank cash-in. While this would be fun for nostalgia, Edge is a bit old now and doesn't have long left in WWE. He's had his chances, and in this case, in this final world title scene, he seems to have failed. The whole one more match gimmick was Christian's thing, after all. Let's just let it lie and give him a different angle for his final hurrah that doesn't involve a ladder. Think of his poor knees. Should number 10, Bailey. While I would like Io to win it more, a Money in the Bank victory for Bailey wouldn't be all that bad either. She's been rather directionless since being repeatedly dominated by Bianca last year and hasn't looked remotely like the threat she realistically should be. A Money in the Bank win at the expense of Io would be a superb way to get heat. You could even have the two feud over the briefcase itself. Either way, a win would help Bailey get that credibility she once had and so desperately needs to find again. She's a horsewoman, after all. And shouldn't number 10, Indy Hartwell. Similarly to Zoe Stark, a Money in the Bank win is just too much too soon for the former NXT Women's Champ. Due to her ongoing ankle injury, she's not yet had the chance to introduce herself to the main roster audience, so realistically she needs to do that first to avoid a flat response upon her winning the case. Yes, I know it could also immediately establish a much-needed new star. However, the way as a main roster act need time to recapture their magic. Gargano is fairly over, but none of them have really found their footing yet, so let's give it time, and I'm sure Indy will be a big star before long. And that's our list. Who would you like to win the briefcase, and who would you definitely like to not win the briefcase? Let us know in the comments, and why don't you check out last week's video with a little clip of that being played right now.
backstage at AEW was having a good old whinge. It was peak WWE, basically, at least for the last few years it's been their peak. Things are a little samier now. There are a few more reasons for fans to moan. Definitely not as bad as things have been, but there's a way up from here under Papa H. Let's talk about it this week. I'm Adam from WrestleTalk, and here are nine ways Triple H can make WWE exciting again.